Now listen, you know what happened on Wednesday, and you know what the problem was. Too many players not competing. Now look, we cannot make excuses for our performance. On the day, we wasn't good enough. But it was only because some of us went out there and won before we started playing. Colin, I want a better performance from you today. You know what the problem is? You're pulling your head down every time you've got a problem. I want your head up in the air, right? And I want you running with the ball. They've had the biggest rollicking getting beat with, with the unslit they've ever had. They'll come out to knock you down today. They'll come out, they'll try to dust you. I don't want any silly penalties. And if I see any mouthing on that park, any, which we got a penalty again and cost us two points, discipline. I know you don't like it. We've got to do it. And we do have a problem. We've got to win today. There'll be a lot of knockers on the terraces, and rightly so, because they're disappointed they're not going to Wembley. We've got to pick ourselves up today, we've got to get up off the floor, and we've got to give it back to them spectators. They pay our wages. Without them, we're knackered. Your money, 160 quid. Now, that, you don't deserve that, but that's what you're getting. We've got to go out today and win the league. If we win today and next week, we'll win the league. Let's go out today and win it. Come on, best of luck. Come on, come on, come on, lads. Come on, come on. Hello again. And you can see if the Wigan lads turn those words from the boss into actions on the field against Hull Kingston Rovers in just a moment. Later in the programme, a report from Carcassonne in the wake of Great Britain's stylish victory over France there yesterday. And we'll announce the winners of our competition for a day out for two at the Return International at Hull in two weeks' time, plus a check on all the latest league news. But now let's get straight on with tonight's action, Wigan versus Hull Kingston Rovers at Central Park. As usual, the match commentary is from Keith Macklin. Wigan are fifth in the championship table with 12 wins and a draw in 17 matches and they're unbeaten at Central Park in the league. If they beat Rovers today, they'll leapfrog over them into fourth place with three games in hand over all the top four clubs. But after that cup defeat by Castleford, Alex Murphy has had to reshuffle his side because of injuries. Brian Juliff is on the right wing with David Wood in the centre and young Sean Wayne gets the choice over John Pendlebury at loose forward. At standoff, playing only a second game there for Wigan is David Stevenson, the international centre who hasn't been sure of his place recently. He takes over at number six in the absence of Foy and Fairs. Hull Kingston Rovers, like Wigan, have a lot to prove to themselves, their supporters and their coach Roger Millwood after their shock cup defeat at Hunslet. Although they stand fourth in Division One, they've played 20 games and lost seven of them, the last three in a row, and coach Roger Millwood has really cracked the whip. Out go Phil Lowe, says he's retiring from the game. Steve Hartley, John Millington and Chris Burton. Brought in a John Lydia at fullback with George Fairman at centre. David Laws on the wing. Mike Smith at standoff. And at loose forward is Tracy Lazenby, 19 years old and yet another product of the Colts team. It's his first full senior appearance. The referee, John Holdsworth of Leeds. And this game being played despite the fact that just down the road at St Helens, that game has been postponed because of frost on the ground. Hull Kingston Rovers who kick off into Wigan territory. Wigan looking for a double. They beat Rovers 6-5 at Craven Park. At Shaw for Wigan. Both coaches have called for commitment in no uncertain terms. Mike Smith to Fairburn, quickly out to Laws. Laws going down the touchline. He's inside William. No, he's held him beautifully. Good tackle by Barry Williams. But Rovers in full flight. Lazenby straightening up, going for the ball. Good running by this young lad. But no one there. No, oh, typical example of some of the woeful backing up. There's Laws down the touchline. What's this for a tackle by Barry Williams? Good tackle. Case. Wigan working with Shaw on the first drive and Case the second. Take it out of trouble. Now here's Scott. Short ball taken by Campbell. Sinbin. Roy Holstock has offended once too often. That was a high tackle. Ten minutes into Sinbin. Roy Holstock prop forward for Hull Kingston Rovers. Goes off for 10 minutes in the single. It was a high tackle, you'll see it coming up. Bang, right across the chest. 
Gordon Smith. Always wanting to keep the ball moving, this New Zealand scrum half. Robinson. Gordon Smith, Hogan. Taken down by Wood. Watkinson, Robinson, the long one. Oh, interception! Colin Whitfield! Has he the legs to beat Lydiard? Yes! Whitfield it! The interception was on from the moment the pass was made. It's Robinson floating it out. There's Whitfield. And from now on, it's a question of Whitfield versus Lydiard. And Lydiard, a yard behind him, can't get there. Whitfield the scorer. There's the kick. And it's wide. Just wide. At the length right and the height. 3-0 to Wigan. Robinson. Smith. Lazenby. Gets it out nicely to Mike Smith. And a good pass. A little unlucky there, Rovers. But it changes the direction of the players. Gill is now reeling its way through. And he's left uh, Steve Crooks a little bruise behind him. Scott. And Watkinson making sure that Scott is well and truly tackled. He's putting down there as if driving in a tent peg. Stevens. Whitfield. The short kick meant for Gill. All for touch. Lydiot. Feels it cleanly. And Watkinson, Watkinson is involved in a fracas there with Kiss. The penalty is to Wigan. scored his ninth try of the season going for his 58th goal and it's there 5 nil. John Pendlebury's coming on and it looks as if Danny Campbell's the man to go off another dust up in the scrums John Holdsworth getting there in the middle of it in the lion's den and somebody else is going in the simbing kiss for something. Dicky Kiss, the Wigan hooker, takes a short walk. Gordon Smith, Lazenby, Hogan coming on that, on the burst, up to the halfway line. Lazenby. Change of direction by a good pass by Gordon Smith, prone to Robinson, and there's an offence over there. Whether Mr. Holdsworth will let play go on, but the touch judge is waving his flag for some incident over by the touchline. Probably a punch thrown in. Yeah, there's the mime. A punch thrown off the wall. Glinshaw is coming over for a talking to, and this will be a penalty for Rovers. John Lydiot, I feel a whole lot better now. So it's come down just outside the Rover 25 play on the referee. Good pass from Gordon Smith to Mike Smith, and he's running well. Good pass, Pro must be in. Gary Pro will score, heading towards the post. Can Stevens cut him off? Pro's in, 5-5. Five five. Lovely move. So 
some argument about Mike Smith's pass to Prone. But a beautiful move. There's Gordon Smith. Lovely pass. Now watch the way Mike Smith uses an acceleration to open up a gap. He cuts out the centre, the long one. And once Prome is away, there's no doubt about it. Good one. Good kick. 7-5. Now the world's looking a better place for this young man. Kelly. Got it out. Well, oh, beautifully picked up and transferred by Smith to Gordon Smith to Fairbairn. Fairbairn still going strongly, pushing men off. Oh, beautifully taken by Lydia. What a catch from a low pass. He's going himself. Oh, well, Roth took a very difficult pass. And steamed in for that. Lydia makes it 10-5. There's the pass. Beautifully taken, he realises that it's either himself or the winger decides to go himself, and for once Barry Williams can't get him. Pretty similar position to the two successful kicks. He's already landed. No, this time he's wide. But the try was well worth seeing. Wigan five, Hulkingston Rovers ten. Close on half time. Wigan's grip on the game has certainly relaxed in this last five minutes. One of the vital factors could have been the fact that during that time the hooker was in the sin bin. But it's play on and Wigan have it. Kiss is back. There's the hooter. So Hulkingston Rovers, after trailing 5-0 with an interception try from Whitfield and a penalty goal from Whitfield, have hit back magnificently. A try and two goals from Lydiot and a try by Pro. Half-time, Wigan 5, Hulkingston Rovers 10. Join us again for the second half. And it's Whitfield who kicks down deep. Lydiot. Pounding their way out. Hogan. Watkinson. That's Hogan kicking. And it's a good one. Takes play into Wigan territory. Rovers leading by 10 points to 5. Straighten up, says the referee, Mr. Ellsworth. Stevens to feed. Comes out to Gordon Smith. Stevens quick to bury him. Mike Smith. Lazenby. Making it over very strongly. Mike Smith is behind him. Gordon Smith always up there in support of the play of the ball. That's Andrew Kelly. Old stock. Breaks through. Good pass to Mike Smith. Mike Smith gets it out. Good kick ahead by Smith, but the referee won't allow it. It was forward. The pass was forward. But that was an enterprising break by Mike Smith. That's Holstock. Mike Smith in support. Again, Williams, an excellent tackle, and the pass to Smith was forward. Rovers have it. Robinson. Things not going right for Wigan at the moment. 
despite the fact they've probably had a roasting at half time. Lazenby. Hogan. That's Lydia top in the line to Crooks. Crooks still going, slipping a tackle. Gordon Smith holds stock. Holds stock going for the post. Roy holds up in. The front row forwards in under the post. Well, Wigan really having their noses rubbed in at the moment, and that's Roy Holstock. There's the pass. Now, Holstock could have kept it going, but for some reason, when he thought there's a chance, and he was right. Through the gap. That's only Roy Holstock's second try of the season, and he's one of those who was brought back by Roger Millwood after the disaster at Hunslet. Yep. Wigan 5, Hulkingston Rovers 15. John Lydiot's third successful kick. Oh, no, Wigan a lot to do now. Sean Wayne goes off for Wigan. Another young player, Brian Dunn, comes on. An attempt to break my wood. Stevens. Stevenson. Whitfield. Inside to David Stevenson, who manages to get it away to Wood. And Wood trying to find a gap. Gets it out well to Stevens. Stevens looking for the kick. It's Julius to race with Crow. Crow looks as though he'll get there first. Brian Julius has been starved of action this afternoon. That's a nice kick through by Stevens. Close to the Rovers line. And Wigan push. Push him over the line and drop out onto the post. That'll give Wigan possession. John Lydiot driven back over his own line. Wigan desperate for points. Danny Campbell has come on for Ryan Case. Ryan Case goes off. Pendlebury straightening it up. Campbell on the charge, gets it out, and it's Stevens who kicks it dead. Gordon Smith holds stock. Ian Robinson, who was caught by a kick as Julius dived over his tackle. Kelly. Watkinson, Crooks. Hogan, the short kick by Mike Smith. Williams going across. Oh, and the kick ahead is bouncing towards touch. It was Fairbairn and Laws who followed it up. That's taken play to 10 yards from the Wigan line. George Fairbairn following up Mike Smith's kick. Swinging changes, paying off so far. Very competitive match, they lead 15-5. Wigan, of course, having to make changes largely through injuries. Rover's ball, Gordon Smith pouches it securely. Lazenby. There again, going straight and going hard. 
for a 19-year-old, he really knows how to drive in the wedges. Old stock, Hogan, Kelly. Fairbairn to Gordon Smith, inside to Mike Smith. Now gone in the second half, 25 to go. Fairbairn the drop kick. It's there. Another point to Rovers. Fairbairn a drop goal. Well, it's only one point, but it means that Rovers are three scores away from Wigan. There's Gordon Smith, a plan move. There's George Fairbairn in position. There's the drop goal. 11 points to the margin now. We're going to have to score at least three times. Proctor's on, Mike Smith goes off. Gordon Smith getting through an enormous amount of work. Almost calling the tune at the play of the ball. Watkinson acting half-back, whole stock. So play is still inside that Rovers 25, but the defence hasn't yet cracked. Just ten minutes remaining. Wood. Getting it inside. Oh, well picked up. No support there. Kendall Bray. Dunn. Stevens. Fendel Bray. Scott to Shaw. Trying to find the gap. Just two yards away, Wigan frustratingly short time and time again. Campbell, the long pass, flies into touch. No Henderson Gill out there, of course. And this reshaped Wigan side. A direct penalty to... Old Kingston Rovers, Wigan doing all they can in the scrum. And it's given away a penalty. Idiot. There's five minutes remaining. Rovers playing out time, although as so often happens in these games when a side has been on the defensive for much of the half, they're always likely to break away and score themselves. But I imagine Rovers will be content to contain Wigan now. They lead 16-5. They've taken everything Wigan can throw at them in this second half. Smith, Hogan, and Laws is on to that. Laws is still running and looking for support. Slipping out of tackle after tackle. Smith, little beaver around the screen. Well, our Hogan's going for the killer finish. Yes, David Laws. David Laws is under the post. <laughs> Super.
Superb try by this young winger. Change of direction, floored the defence, and wrong footed the fullback. Beautiful try. Robinson giving it out. Lazenby. Law slips a tackle, finds the gap, and there's the inside swerve that wrong foots the defence. And he just has the face to beat another good tackle, to be fair, by Barry Williams, but he's too late. Lydiot lands the goal. Wigan, five. Hulkingston Rovers, 21. Comprehensive victory this by Rovers. Whitfield not able to get the ball out Stevens to Campbell to Julif there it is there's the Hooter and after that defeat by 21 points to 5 after all the hard words before the game I wonder what Alex Murphy will have to say to his team in the dressing room now neither and excuses you train here now from now on if you don't want to train fuck off somewhere else david you're going to start training three nights a week if you don't train three nights a week you're going on the list right if you're a mile overweight and you're looking for excuses all the time right i'm telling you to your face i'm not telling you behind your back you get down here tuesday every single one of you and if you want anybody who wants to do anything about it you know where my office is and i accept letters Got a week to get it right, and a week we're going to get it right. Witness at home, and I want no absentees. Life's got to go on, you know. It doesn't finish right because we've lost two games. It doesn't finish because we end up on the Challenge Cup. We've worked hard all season. Be bloody proud about yourself, didn't men. So if you've ever wondered what it's like to be in a top club's changing room after a 16 points defeat, now you know. And uh, you've only seen some of the more tolerant excerpts, I can tell you, from what was a blistering inquest. Well, from Alex Murphy's baffled rage to his opposite numbers' fierce pride, Roger Millward's side hadn't won a game in their last four matches. They'd been humbled by Hunslet just a week before, and there had been some major team changes. So the Hull Kingston Rovers manager certainly had a cause for pride. Very proud man tonight, I must admit. Uh, I think the players went out there and gave a lot, a lot of effort, and uh, they showed a lot of personal pride, and that's the one thing that I wouldn't see in this match today, especially after the defeat last week at Onslet. What exactly had you told them before the match? Well, obviously, uh, we talked about Wigan. and uh, I went out for dinner with Malcolm on Thursday night, Malcolm Reilly, and we spoke about how Wigan had played. And so we knew one or two things where we could start really, you know, breaking it up a bit for ourselves because Wigan have been renowned this year for coming up very quick on people and uh, closing them down. So consequently, we used these little chip overs just into the gap just to make Wigan start, you know, being a bit apprehensive and holding back a bit on us. And uh, it worked really well because then we started finding some, some running space and from there we just, uh, we just went on and on. Was that a d deliberate tactic of yours to take Malcolm Reilly, the Castleford coach, out to dinner? No, <laughs> not really, no. We'd arranged this before before that. Now what about the young players in your side like that you brought in? Calculated risks, John Lydiot, David Law, Tracy Lazenby. I thought they did very well. Uh, they acquitted themselves very well and uh, they've been proven in the A-team that they have got a lot of honesty, they have got a lot of ability and today it's just proved that today they've done a, a remarkable job. I think uh, you know that they've done themselves a lot of good not, not only at my club but in the game as well because people will be talking about them now. Now, Lazenby was in on several scoring moves, and particularly that last killer try in the last minute by David Laws. Yes, I thought that was a beautiful try. I really enjoyed it from the bench as well. Uh, it shows a lot of pace here and a lot of vision. A good ball to David Laws into the gap, and then a superb sidestep. And the lines is, there's no way anybody's going to stop him. It was a, a super try. 
It certainly was. Well, now to the action up and down the league tables. A look at the slalom lager championship table shows the importance of Wigan's defeat. Still games in hand, but now ten points behind Leeds. Oldham slipping now after a promising start to the season, and down at the bottom, Halifax, Workington and Carlisle still in desperate trouble.